Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to another live weekly show. I do these live weekly shows because it's just easier to get them out to you. I give you a first impression of what it is that I'm examining. I've not watched any previous reviews by anybody, so it's the first time looking at this figure for me. Besides the preview of when I ordered the figure, um, I'll watch some of the other shows by other people later, but I want to get a first impression of it. So this is the Marvel Sony PS4 um, Spider-Man game, Marvel 2099 Miguel O'Hara Spider-Man. So this is from the video game version of Spider-Man, and they call it the Black Suit, and I find it interesting that they say 2009B on here, which leads me to believe that they might possibly be making the white suit. Now, I've never played the video game. I've seen lots of videos of people playing the video game, and I've seen the figures that are in the video game, and I'm, I'm excited about this one. I bought, you know, when these came out, uh, when this uh, comic came out back in the 90s, I uh, followed every one of them, bought the first one, bought the entire set that came out uh, then, 20, however many it was. And um, he, the reason he's black and blue is because that's how artists would do a black suit most of the time. Sometimes they do just a black suit, but for instance, like on the Venom comic here, he's black and blue. And that's just the way that they would portray, you know, black to make it look nicer. So the suit was never intended to be blue. The suit was intended to be black. Just like Venom here. Is, Venom is black. There's no question about the color of Venom's suit is black. And so they did Miguel O'Hara's Spider-Man 29 with the same shading technique to make him appear blue, but he's a black suit. But when they put the um, video game together, they made him blue, blue and red. And that's fine. Um... Because really, you know, in all actuality, Miguel never went really went anywhere. The, the 2099 series didn't continue. Um, they made uh, several characters in the 2099 series back in the 90s. And that was about as far as it went. Um, but uh, that's the reason that he's blue. Because that's how they would paint or color black suits. So and it's fine because Spider-Man is red and blue, right? So... It, it, it doesn't hurt my feelings that they did him red and blue, if you know what I'm saying. It's not like, you know, how dare they make him red and blue. But that's fine. Um, in all the comics, he's, he's blue and black like that. But it is a black suit, is what it truthfully is. If they were to ever bring him into any other universe, truthfully, or any other incarnation of him, and to do an accurate display of what he should have been from the comic, it would be a black suit. And 2099 wasn't a different universe. It was an alternate universe. From my understanding, it was Earth 616, the main Marvel universe, just in the year 2099. And Miguel O'Hara was like a, I don't know, a geneticist or something. He worked somewhere with some company or whatever, and he was wanting to experiment with some law. I don't remember what the whole story was, but uh, he ended up Getting and becoming Spider Man 2099, Spider Man more or less, um, differently but the same, you know, same ability. You know how Spider Man works. So, this is a cool looking box again. It's VGM 042 from the video game series. How you doing, Jake? Save all Mason, how are you, Matt? What's going on, man? Awesome, awesome. Glad to hear you got the shoes. Sweet, 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 sweet. Sent it. Uh, Matt bought the um, blue bottom. Nike Air Jordans or whatever they are off of uh, bottom of Miles Morales. I shipped them out to him. Ian, how's it going? Dark and gloomy in the UK. So this is another. Uh, it's another character that I I, I enjoyed Spider Man twenty ninety nine. I thought he was a cool character, like uh, Scarlet Spider. I enjoyed Scarlet Spider Venom. I enjoyed Venom. Um, there's just some characters that I appreciated and I enjoyed Miguel O'Hara. Thought it was a pretty cool Spider-Man. Side so exclusive sticker on here, meaning that it wasn't necessarily available anywhere other than distributors of official distributors of Hot Toys products. So you wouldn't necessarily have been able to get it at other toy manufacturers other than the ones that are officially 
licensed by Hot Toys. And this appears to be an image of the figure on the front of the screen here. Okay, we've got a magnet, magnetic box opening. That's cool. Didn't expect that. Cast and crew right here. Hopefully we got a good figure so I don't have to curse these guys out. Let's see who do we have. Some names I'm familiar with. A lot of names I have no idea who they are. Um, the costume production designers, James Lee, James Lee, Leo Tao, and Hero Kwan. Hero Kwan I've seen quite a bit. I don't know who Oliver Lee is. James Lee and LT. Death at the Law. A lot of, a lot of new names uh, at Hot Toys that I'm not familiar with. And if you watched the Hawkeye and the Black Widow unboxing, you might have noticed that I wasn't too necessarily pleased with their depiction of the figures in relation to the show, the, 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 the movie. Same thing with uh, Miles Morales, the coat that he is wearing in the movie is green or teal. It's not blue. Um, Young Rich Toys showed a green coat in the previews. They also showed a head sculpt with these masks halfway on, kind of like the, um, I don't forget who did it, so so or Dim Toys, somebody did a half mask. Peter head, um, but it never it never came that way. And then they went to the blue coat, and then Hot Toys announced their figure, and it's a blue coat. And I, I got a problem with that because if you watch the movie, it is not blue, and there is blue in the movie with him wearing the coat, specifically where he's standing in front of his his uh, subway art, if you call it that. Um, there's lots of blue there, and he's wearing his green coat at that point, and the coat is green, not blue. And I got a problem with that. Well, I don't believe there's going to be much instruction um, let's crack it open and see what's going on uh, the problem is with the reward points that uh, I get. They're only for stuff that I've either A, I've already bought, or B, or have no intention of ever ordering. I, it's really difficult for me to be able to take advantage of any reward points through Sideshow. You know, they send all these coupons and all that, and said this coupon expires in, in uh, three weeks, and you can only use it on 12 figures. And then, of course, when you order your items like this, and you earn whatever it is, $10 or whatever, you don't actually get it until you actually take delivery of the item. And then I think it's a month after that or something. I don't even know. Um, so I think I've got eight figures on pre-order at Sideshow. And I think at Big Bad Toy Store, I've got like 25 figures on pre-order. And I've got a couple figures on pre-order at Toys Wonderland, a couple figures on pre-order at 1-6 Kit, a couple figures on pre-order at 1-6 Outfitters. The very first thing they talk about how much to bend forward or backward the body. And I find that interesting. That'd be the absolute most important thing that they want to talk about. And they do show that there's total articulation in regards to the other joint movability. Let's turn these lights on. Now, if Sideshow gave me a discount on figures have already got on pre-order. That'd be great. Give me some cash back on that when they send out a coupon. But no, doesn't work that way. How to remove the hands and put the web shooters on. And how to put the webs into the hands. 
And I've broken webs in the past, so definitely you want to be careful with webs when putting them in. Showing that the piece on the forearm can come off, so be careful with it, and it's sharp. So don't get stuck with it. Sliding figure stand for Spider-Man. And keep the figure out of high heat and humidity. Interesting, humidity. Don't rob or wipe the body with thinner benzene, alcohol, or any corrosive materials which could damage the body. Not much. But evidently they want you to be careful with the body, the torso, in your dealings with it. So let's see what that's all about here in a second. CBS Sci-Fi, how you doing, man? By the way, I got my Venom Pool box came in yesterday. So I'll be adding into the list. So next week we're going to do Iron Man Mark IV hologram figure. And then the week after that, we're going to do the Venom Pool. So that's the plan for that. So here's all the accessories. A lot of hands. A lot of hands. Neat little web shooter here. That's neat. I like how they show that coming out of him there. That's pretty cool. That's a neat little way of doing a web shooter. I like that. That uniqueness of it. That's pretty cool. Standard set of webbing that we've got for God, the last 15 years. The little splat. here and the one we've been getting recently which I, I i like to call it the todd mcfarlane because it really wasn't until todd mcfarlane did we have crazy uncontrolled web and so this is when the web got its own life so let me get that again which i'm nice i'm glad to see that i, I if they have any spider-man figure they don't include this uh, it's always like why why did you just leave that out doesn't make any sense it should just include it i like the feel of the body um, it's the same like, you know, Deadpool or, or, um, what was the other one? Um, Vance suit, Spider-Man. It's a different suit though. Whereas, um, there was a suit that was similar to the Vance suit, Spider-Man. The negative suit, I think was the same suit, wasn't it? Just painted differently. This is a different suit. So that's cool. I do like how he feels. Okay, I can see why they're saying not to uh, bend this much. Because this is like glued onto it. This piece here is. So if you bend it excessively, you're going to pop this off of the body. I can tell you that much right now. So what I'm going to be inclined to do is not bend this portion of him much at all, actually, if, if, uh, if at all, um, because it's definitely not molded into it. Now, the shoulder pieces appear to be molded into the body or the suit, but this piece and this chest piece are obviously not. Um, 2099 Spider-Man comic, his bottom of his feet are blue. So this is definitely a comic, the a video game, Spider-Man 2099, not the um, comic Spider-Man 2099. And that's cool. I have no problem with that. I love all the Spider-Men. It's like the Scarlet Spider. You know, he has um, regular feet in the comic, but in the video game, evidently they give him the separated toe shoes. And his sweatshirt is different in the, in the comic. So that's why I bought two of them, because originally I was thinking about trying to make him look more like the comic Scarlet Spider, but I abandoned that quickly. So I have two of them. I don't mind having two. I didn't need two. Now, on the other side of the coin, a lot of these figures, 
I shoot like five of the, uh, I would like to have five of the Tom Holland regular suit Spider-Man. I have two. I did order five, but then my wife went into the hospital a year ago. And that's when they started shipping them and I had to cancel them all to, uh, I just had to cancel them all. I didn't know what the hell was going on anymore at that point, if you can imagine. So I got just one, canceled the other four, and then I bought one when the, um, the movie promo edition came out or something along that line. I don't remember how, how it all went down, whether I'd ordered one originally and then four later to make the five, or if I had originally ordered five and then was able to get this movie promo edition later. I, I don't remember how I did it, to tell you the truth, but I remember having to cancel them. Cancel them. And have only two. But because it's in every one of the five movies that he was in, you know, truthfully, he belongs in Infinity War, Endgame, Homecoming, Far From Home, and Civil War. That suits in all five of those movies. So as you group your characters together, you'd get that. I like how they do the little toe piece on there. And again, this must be specifically video game feet um, because those aren't feet from the comic. And again, I have no problem with that. That's, it says it's a video game figure. So now whether or not they would to make a comic version of it, I couldn't tell you. I don't know. I mean, obviously, I would assume that there's been some popularity of him since the Enter the Spider-Verse movie, you know, and or the video game. Um... But the 2099 series just didn't last at Marvel. Plus, Marvel was going through some serious money issues back then. So they were really doing away with a lot of, a lot of things. They weren't doing all that great in the 90s. It's hard to believe now, right? Really get some great posing out of that. You get a good straight-up bend of the foot. Not much left and right. But we're, it's because of the leotard, or the unitard that he wears, that you're not going to get that. So, it's good enough. Double-jointed knee, but you're not going to get all the way up to kick himself in the butt. But, again, I'm not going to be putting this guy into severe poses, truthfully. This, this is... This is going to be a major concern of mine in regards to things. In the comics, I don't think his web shooters were in his hand here. Um, so they have them on the bottom of his suit. So the web shooters are right there. But uh, <clears throat> I think in the comics, he shot him out just like um, Black Suit Spider-Man did. So again, the 2099 video game is a different than the 2099 comic, two different universes. I do like the metallic red in his hand, looks really nice. This is interesting. His neck is fixed, totally fixed. There's, there's no neck joint at all. I mean, at all. It's all one solid piece of shoulders to the neck. It's a solid piece. So that's going to limit your um, positioning of the head as well. So you can only get down about that far, which isn't much. You do get a pretty good up. It's really interesting that they uh, wouldn't put a neck joint here. Again, it must be because of this piece here on the front of his chest. They wanted to make, to keep that from getting all bent up. One thing I can assume, he looks great. Really love this dark blue. Let's see if it's a different shade of blue than the other Spider-Man.
It is. It's dark. I mean, dark blue. Here's a um, advanced suit spiny, which is pretty close to the traditional blue and red that we've seen. And this is twenty nine. And this is Miguel. I mean, it's dark, dark blue. I don't know if you guys can see that. The, the difference there. It's huge. It's dark. No doubt about it. Stands well on his own. Nice solid joints, which is very important. Because a lot of times you don't want to have to use the display stand if at all, if you can get away with it at all. figure will stand on his own. You don't need the display stand. Stand him on his own. So here's this other I don't okay so it's not really the web shooter it's like the webbing shooting from the this is neat. So the web shooter is there still on his wrist. So this isn't the web shooter, this is the web leaving the shooter. That's cool that they did that. First time I've seen them do that. Lots of hands. 12 hands, six pairs. extra wrist joints and of course my opinion on wrist joints is if you pull off the hand and it stays the wrist joint the ball stays in the hand don't fight it replace that into the arm you know if if it wants to stay in a hand don't you, it's i find just use an extra one instead of fighting to pull it out just leave it where it is wherever it wants to stay leave it don't don't uh The static cling is insane. That's my personal opinion on the, the wrist joints. If you have difficulty getting it out, don't fight it. Don't damage it. You know what I mean? Please read instruction sheet first and follow all construction details during the assemble process. I've always hated that they say the assemble process. I, I would think it would be proper for them to say the assembly or assembling process, not assemble. And I've, I've talked about that for years. It's been a lot of times since I've read that little message on there. So I guess they're using the same sticker. So all the other display stands have the Spider-Man logo on it. This does not. Mm. Spider-Man Punk Spider-Man doesn't really have the Spider-Man logo on it. But it has, I guess it does have the Spider-Man logo, but this does not. Has a, a, this looks like one of those third-party um, display stands that you would get that would just throw a you know, picture of something on there and say the name on it. I find that interesting that they would do that instead of sticking with the video game logo on there and saying spider-man it's interesting i wonder if they did that because this isn't peter parker you know what i mean it's miguel o'hara like miles miles is not peter parker spider gwen is not peter parker and this is not this is not peter parker it's, it's um it's spider-man 2099 you know what i mean i wonder if that's why they did that differentiate the fact that you're not dealing with the Peter Parker. It is Spider-Man, but not Spider-Man. Like Miles Morales is Spider-Man. Spider-Gwen is Spider-Man, but not, not Peter Parker 
or Peter Porker or Peter B. Parker or any rare variation there in, an, in the multiverse. It's definitely a different person, different time. I wonder if that's why they did that. I don't like it. It, it literally looks like, again, like some of the third-party ones you get when you need additional figure bases, figure stand bases, display bases, and they make this. I don't like it. They should have put the logo on there still from the video game. Oh, well. What can you say? So where does this go? Should have read the instructions a little bit closer. It looks like it goes... Let the dog go on. His little hand comes apart. Look at that. So you peel the front, you peel the palm of his hand off to put the little web shooter in there. Uh, well, the web shooter's on his arm, but you put this uh, piece, which makes it look like the webbing is actually coming out in in a, in a, in a gloop or a glop, or even a pre-shooting of the web. That's uh, pretty cool. Miguel, if I remember, he didn't use his webbing much, if I remember correctly. He literally would just kick your ass. <laughs> wonder which all the ones this comes out of. Not that one. Not that one. He has a saluting hand. Why would he have a saluting hand? And it's left hand. Doesn't make any sense. Maybe he's going to knife chop you. Yeah, like I said, he would kick your ass. Maybe that was an intent of using this hand so he can put some serious martial art action on you. It's a straight up flat kind of hand. Power Rangers figures are great. I enjoyed watching the Power Rangers back in the day. I remember my daughter wanted to be a pink Power Ranger girl. I like the, the fist has the, the hole in both ends specifically for um, the new spider webbing. On my um, spider Gwen, I had to put a hole through her hand in order to be able to put that webbing on it, and it turned out really nice. I enjoyed that. I love that. I love this this Todd McFarlane webbing. I love it. A webbing of choice, truthfully. That or or the you know just the splotch coming out. So it only works on the I love yous. Which I'm assuming in the video game, he figured he fired his webbing as such, which is the traditional way of Spider-Man shooting his webbing. But if I remember correctly, in uh, the comic, he didn't have a web shooter. He, he, I think he manufactured it. I think it came out of him. If I remember correctly, it's been a long time since I've read the comic. I ought to read them all again. Okay, well, this is going to be weird because it's past where the little um, web shooter is. So I'm assuming that's the web shooter, right? So that looks off. Yeah, I don't like how that looks. 
It looks. It actually looks sloppy. So a neat effect that they screwed up. Because, so, on this character, let's keep these hands separate. On this character, you have a little fine tip nozzle there where the webbing would come out of, right? On this web shooter. That's obviously what this is. It has to be a web shooter. I can't imagine it being anything else. And with the red stripe on it, that's exactly how it goes. So it's definitely coming from his, from his under wrist. And they give him the good old... I love you, thwip, hand pose. So, obviously, he shoots his webbing as such, as the majority of Spider-Men do. Um, so, when you put this glop, this web glop coming out with the, you know, the, um, the traditional I love you, thwip, hand pose, it's, it's, it covers up the little fine tip point. It just looks like it's a mess. The fine tip point, you know, is coming out here. And they got this glop coming out here back before the tip would be. And and if you try to, you know, bend the wrist to try to get it lined up there, it just doesn't line up. It just looks it looks messy. It's it's a good idea. They just made it bad. What they should have done was, instead of it being back so far, you know, as it is, they should have just spun it around the other direction if they wanted to use this. I wonder how much of the webbing actually goes into it. I use the web ball and have a look at it Let's see what we get well pretty much the entire length of the uh, portion that they have smooth for it will fit into it so it's quite a bit But it still leaves a good half centimeter of space here on the bottom. Um, I'm wondering if maybe if they had, because truthfully, where this is, where this goes to, if you look at it, right to about there. And that's pretty much right there where the, the wrist would be at this little piece. So... Um, I guess in all actuality, if you really wanted to customize your figure to make it look less yuck, because I really think that's what it kind of looks like right now. And there's no other way of attaching the webbing unless you do like I did with my spider Gwen, because uh, Gwen doesn't have web shooters in the movie. Um, she shoots it like this, but there's no web shooter that's visible. Uh, so what I did was I didn't put the web shooters on her, on the bullet head figure. I'll show you what I did. I just stuck them under her um, wrist there into the material, if you can see that. Because that's how it goes in the movie. It doesn't come from a web shooter. We don't see a web shooter on her. So I removed the web shooters and then just slid it into her clothing there. So I'm going to see if that can be done here with Miguel. Because he has a web shooter on, and this really neat glob doesn't look all that really neat. It looks really messy. I don't like it.
So let's go with this same hand over here. Let's take off this glob, put the original wrist back on it. Or uh, palm, I should say. And then see what happens if we just slide it under this uniform, the suit. Here's that, I might be wrong, but it looks like they've really attached that suit in there good. I removed the web shooter from that. See if I can slide it up underneath the suit there on the arm. I don't think I can. No, there's no, uh, obviously I could, I could get the knife out, you know, pry it up. I'm not trying to destroy my figure, you know what I mean? I'm trying to improve it. Let's put the web shooter back on, see if we can get underneath this web shooter. Okay, so I can get it between the web shooter and the suit. Yeah, there we go. All right, so now we're back to what, uh, same thing I did with Spider-Gwen. And uh, we'll just go with that. Because this doesn't look necessarily, in my opinion, as messy and globby as this. Uh, this is neat, but I think they just put it on backwards. Still not coming right out of the little point, but I don't think it looks all as messy and globby. I don't know. I guess it would really depend on what your opinion of it is as far as that goes. You know what I mean? Should be able to pose this arm and shoulder well. This red piece is molded into the costume. So it should be able to, uh, uh, I don't want to bend that torso much. If you wanted to pose them as such. I think that looks well enough. I think it looks better than this glop. And now another another option. So I'm looking at this glop. Is possibly, you know, shortening it, just cutting off this last half of a centimeter or whatever here that you don't need with this. You know, because it goes in. You can see how far it goes in there, okay? So there's a, a good portion of it that's not actually holding any of that uh, 
web stick and maybe just cut that off and just shorten it right there, which is which is make it a lot closer to that um, little spigot or nozzle on the web shooter. Or um, cutting it off and then possibly even, you know, gosh, I don't know. I'm really getting out there now, um, flattening it to, to make it a little not so gulpy right there. You know what I mean? Because truthfully, it looks kind of a mess in all actuality when you have it shooting out like that. It looks like his 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 cartridge is his nozzle is just clogged. You know, it's like dude, you need to clean your your jets on your spider shooters because it's coming out as a muck. I was wondering if maybe, you know, this piece could be attached. And, and of course, not. Um, but I was thinking maybe that might be a little better of a, you know, it'd be interesting to have it come out like that. I mean, I don't ever remember Spider-Man's webbing coming out so splayed out at the front of, uh, you know, of the uh, the part that it's exiting. But I suppose it could, truthfully. Maybe with a paper clip, you could attach these two pieces together should you so desire to possibly do something along that line. But I think it's a neat idea, um, but I think it just fell short of what it should have done, truthfully. So I don't believe I'll be using that at all. I think I'll be just this. I mean, this is his web shooter, obviously. And then, you know, if we're going to pose him with webbing, you know, his other hand, we could put the McFarlane webbing in. Okay, well, his right hand doesn't hold the McFarlane webbing, only his left hand does. Or also, not only just the McFarlane webbing, but the, you know, the... I don't know what you call this, but the webbing that actually goes into his hand like this does. So only his left hand has this. His right hand fist, they didn't put a hole in it for whatever reason. So I don't understand why they wouldn't do that. Why doesn't it have a hole? What's the point? For real, it's the same fist. Do you need to have him swinging web from it? Or you have him punch somebody in the face with it. One or the other. I don't know why they didn't do that. They totally, totally skipped out and put no hole in this right fist. So if you're using the McFarlane webbing or the uh, traditional swinging webbing, it's got to have to be in the left hand. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Very interesting choice. When Sideshow first put Spider-Man 29 and Whiplash, all the exclusives up for pre-order, you could not use reward points. Hello? But now you can for anyone thinking about buying the exclusives. There you go, Savon. That's good That's good uh, information to have. So again, like I said, I, I, I hardly ever get to use any coupons or anything on uh, the Sideshow site. It's really, really bothersome. You know what I mean? You would think there they are people who buy all the time from them or whatever. I guess I don't buy all the time from them. I buy a lot from other people as well. But you'd think they would take care of us. The only ones that take care of are the ones that are smart enough, like most of you guys are, and wait till the figure's dropped in price. And then you buy it from them with a discount on top of that and a coupon. And I'm paying full retail, regular price. I order it first day. Oh, well. Bitch, 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 bitch. So we have, of course, the uh, the relaxed hands, and he's got these little claws on there, and that's um, 
indicative of how it is in the comics as well. So he's clawed. His little suit is. So he has a little claws on his fingers. So it's a relaxed hand. We have a uh, a grasping hand. He comes with nothing to grasp, but he has a grasping hand. Choked the shit out of your hand. Of course, the I love you thwip hand. The old uh, planted hand, you know, where he's pressing his fingers down as a Spider-Man hand. The uh, the nails make it not so much so, but it's definitely what the hand is. It's the old, you know, stuck to the wall or crouching down. He, he always does his little hands like that, and that's what this hand is to represent. The thing hand. And then he's got the karate chop hand, which I don't understand what it is for. It's quite interesting. Only on the left hand. For the right hand, of course, again, we have the same thing. We have the um, Spider-Man press hand. So we have right and left of that. We have the, uh, the thwip hand. So we have right and left of that. We have the relaxed hand. So we have a right and left of that. We have the grasping hand, a right and left of that, so he could literally grab something, anything, and, and, and hold on to it. Maybe you want to have him hanging onto the side of a building or something. He could do that. It's definitely what these are. We get these, in my opinion now, useless flip shooter things, which I originally thought was a pretty good idea, but now in practical application, I disagree with it. They did it incorrectly. There's one for each of those. Uh, and instead of a saluting hand we get a pointing hand you know what i think this is probably supposed to be is uh at the end of the spider-man multiverse movie he's like duking it out with the 1967 spider-man who are you who are you i'm you i'm spider-man no i'm spider-man who are you i'm telling you stop pointing at me i think, he's, I think he actually tells him that which one pointed first i think that's the issue so i think that's what this is supposed to be in case you wanted to recreate the um, the end of Spider-Man the Multiverse. Unless he does this in the video game as well. Which again, I wouldn't have any knowledge of. Also, another thing that he's missing from the comics is he wears this... Uh, it was designed to keep him from falling so quickly. It was like a... I forget what he called it. Um, but it was this... Uh, it kind of looks like a raggedy, torn cape that he wears on his back. Uh, even though, you know, Spider-Man says he doesn't wear a cape. <laughs> but it was it was designed to keep him from falling so quickly. It was like a, I don't know, some sort of parachute or something, if I remember correctly. And, and his suit, like the original Spider-Man, the original, original, original Spider-Man, his suit was like a pair of pajamas or something that he turned into a suit. This was like uh, a... a um, a Day of the Dead suit or something that he had from uh, Halloween. So it's interesting that next week is Halloween that this, this figure comes out. Because it's really what the suit, for the most part, was. It was a Day of the Dead celebration. If I remember, if I remember correctly, it's, God, it's been a long time since I read the comic. But uh, that's where the suit came from. So I dig the figure. I'm really glad to have him. I love all the Spider-Men. Um, I don't know how best I'm going to pose him. I might just pose him just like this. Literally, I think I'm I, I'm really digging this. It's really simple. Um, some action to it without too messing it up too much. I think I might want to turn his head a little more so we can see his. Um, yeah, this is what I'm thinking. So we get a shot of his his uh, helmet as well. That's how I think he'll go in the death off. So it's not necessarily a straight up museum pose like I have advanced suit Spider-Man in like you just saw. Um, I have my Spider-Punk strumming his, his guitar in that pose. I have the, the homemade suit kind of in that pose as well, just kind of chilling, just standing there. Uh, a lot of people don't like the museum pose. But sometimes it works just well when you have enough action poses with the other characters. So I think he really looks really cool. If you've not picked him up 
and you like either the comic version or the movie version or the video game version, I don't think you're going to go wrong any way you look at it. It's it's not a disappointing figure. It's a... Um, you're going to have to be careful with the figure, in my opinion. You don't want to get too rough with it. But because of this, which is the absolute most important part, you're going to want to keep that in mind as you're posing him. But I think he works well. He looks really good. He really does. The The head and the suit are not the same material. It's the same like design. They tried to put that uh, the same design on it, but the helmet is definitely smooth, whereas the suit is, is textured. Now, they could have done a textured helmet. They've done textured helmets, like Scarlet Spider-Man's helmet is textured. So they could have done a textured helmet. Also, we'll have interchangeable eyes. To me, that's not as important. I don't really change the eyes out much. I pretty much leave them as they are. But uh, I'm really pleased with them. I'm glad to have him in the collection. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. He's going to be a very welcome piece. And I think, pretty sure that's exactly how I'm going to leave him. Just like that. Looking at his little fins on his left arm, I don't know if maybe if I bent those when I twisted them or not. Sure enough. Um, so I twisted this arm back to get it into a better pose. And when I did, I had this piece here, it, it twisted with it. So the two little fins were no longer straight up. They were, they were out like this. So you want to keep that in mind as well. Try not to twist this portion of this. Because again, this is glued onto this and it'll pop clean off over time. So as you, as you bend it, bend it at the biceps swivel. Try not to bend it at the forearm, and you'll know if you're putting any stress on it because these won't be lined up. You can see there's a little bit of stress on it still. They're not necessarily quite lined up. I don't know if you can see that or not. But I can tell that it's still twisted just a little bit too much to that way. So I'm going to twist them back a little more. So I don't want to stress that. I don't want to stress that uh, suit there. Definitely want to turn the bicep, not that forearm. And I got it straight now. Well, it sure is easy to, to twist, I'll tell you what. I'm digging this. I think this works. I like that. I agree. Um, Sanjiv Amright, I agree. Nice figure. For fact. So if you haven't picked him up, I recommend them if you're a Spider-Man fan. Um, he's a canon figure. You know what I mean? He's not just something that they 
like the advanced suit was nowhere else anywhere else this guy actually has a history you know he exists he existed before the video game now where to put him i might have to buy another dead top that's all there is to it i think i'll put him over here with miles in the meantime put him on my third miles shelf I don't want to put more than three figures on a, on a, one of these dead toffs. It just really gets too crowded. The least figures you can have on there, the better. Of the 12-inch figures. So if not if you're posing six-inch figures, you can put a lot more in there. Without it looking crowded. But anything over three just really starts crowding everything up. He wouldn't be bad with Miles and Spider-Gwen as he was in the movie, but I don't like him there, truthfully. He didn't interact with either of them, you know what I mean? In the movie, he only interacted with 1967 Spider-Man. So that was pretty quick, pretty fast. I don't want to open up these other figures. I definitely want to have something for next week and the week after. I got notification from Toys Wonderland that my um, white outfit Tony Stark is coming. So from Spider-Man Homecoming, when Spider-Man, uh, what does he do? He, he falls off the plane, I think, and lands in the lake or something. I don't remember how he ends up in the lake. And he's drowning, more or less. And the Mark 47 suit makes an appearance and pulls him out of the lake and saves him. And uh, Peter's like, uh, thank you, man, for saving me. You know, um, what were you doing or whatever? I, I forget how he said it. But more or less, the suit opens up and there's no Tony in there. It's just an empty suit, which we've seen in Mark 42 and Iron Man 3. We know that the suit's uh, can be controlled autonomously or by themselves, by Jarvis or whomever. And um, so we see this suit is operating on its own or through him. And then we fast forward to wherever he is on the other side of the world, India, Russia, China, who knows where he really is. He's wearing this white suit. Hell, he could be in Polynesia or Hawaii for that matter. But he's wearing this white suit. And uh, so I ordered that and I got notification that that's coming. So I'll be happy to have that. And I think there's going to be, I swear, I that's why I, I, I'm i still sticking to my guns that we're, that's where we're going to see um, him with more story of that in the Black Widow movie. I mean, I may be far off, but there's just a story there that we don't get enough information of that I feel that they're teasing us with and we're going to get revealed to us later. I might be wrong, but I think... That's what I think, and I think that's where we're going to get an answer on the 48 and 49, even though some of you are dead certain that you're positive that the Hulkbuster 2 is 48 and the Rescue 2 is 49. I stand on my heels and defy that the Mark the 0049 Rescue is Tony's Mark 49, because Tony doesn't use four digits to denote his suits. He doesn't. He used Roman numerals for the first seven, and then he used two digits on all the others we see it on i think it's the the mark 42 and iron man 3 when he's sitting on the couch it's on his forearm and i think on the 15 or something this it actually says it like on the chest or something and it's just two digits but uh um roadies war machines have all had three digits on them 001 002 003 so if he uses two digits roadie uses three digits then four digits pepper pots suits and so that tells us that it's the 49th iteration of a rescue suit, because she was a character in the comics, Rescue was, the 49th iteration of a rescue suit. That's my opinion. It's not Tony's 49th suit. That is a woman's suit, period. It was made for Pepper, not made for him that she wore, as we've seen her do with the Mark 42. She donned the Mark 42, and it did not fit her womanly. It didn't have armor a chest armor that had 
you know, breasts on it. It was a man's suit. The Mark 49 rescue suit looks womanly. So I don't believe for one second that he made a womanly suit for himself, the Mark 49, the 49th Tony Stark suit, and then she took it. I don't believe that for one second. So I'm hoping that in Black Widow we'll get an answer to that. If we don't, then I guess I'll have to fall back and say, okay, you guys are right, it was the 49th suit. But I, I just have a hard time believing that. I really do. Really, 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 really do. Happy Saturday, Robert. Uh, so, so Superman. Nice. Second version, Superman. Sweet. Daft Toys made a comic version, Joker. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay. So you recommend Daft Toys? Cool. Speak of those Tony Stark bodies with the arc reactor. Yeah, I think they call them the MK100s. I was going to get a couple of them, uh, and, uh, you know, money is obviously the object. But uh, I know exactly which ones you're talking about. They look really nice. And you, 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 it comes with three interchangeable pieces you can put on there. Uh, the Mark 50, I think. Uh, the Mark 4, I think. And the Mark 6, I think, are the ones that you can interchange it with. And that's neat. And actually, in all honesty, you could use any of these... Uh, arc reactors there if you wanted to take it off of a figure you could put it on there and, and there's been two or three that they've given us on top of that so you, you if you've bought them over the years you may have additionals as it is so and it's really neat it's a it's a little piece that goes into his chest that, that uses batteries and you take that in and out and light it up they're perfect for any of his plain clothes or the uh the iron man uh the racing suit the, the mark the racing suit that he wore at Monaco in Iron Man 2 or anything along that is perfect for those because they only made just a couple of the uh, Iron Man Tony Starks with the little arc reactor in them so and those are hard to come by they've all been sold out got your James Bonds going on cool Roger and Connery I'm curious to see what Sam as Cap in Winter Soldier uh, yeah, uh, what'd they call him? Was he called Captain America when he did that in the comics? Because he had like a red and white and blue outfit and everything. Oh, I can't wait for WandaVision to come out, man. Avengers fighting Loki with Mark VI. He, um, he, um, created the Mark VI at the end of Iron Man 2, and then in Avengers he starts with the Mark VI. So when he fights Loki and Thor, he's wearing the, the Mark VI. And then um, he flies into Avenger, to uh, Stark Tower, where Loki is waiting for him, and the gantry removes the Mark VI from him. He's walking around there in his uh, the main living room or whatever it is there of the Stark Tower, and he puts on the bracelets which control then the Mark VII is able to fly to him. So it was the first suit that he could attach into uh, and that he didn't need a gantry from. They had a scene in Iron Man 2 where he stepped out of the suit at the expo, but they removed it. So canon-wise, the only way of getting Mark two, three, four, and six on was with a gantry. The Mark V could be put on through the suitcase, but it was a very limited suit. It wasn't it didn't have the capabilities necessarily of what the Mark VI has. The Mark VI was really just a redesigned Mark IV. The Mark IV was damaged, and he put the new arc reactor into it and upgraded it, and it became the Mark VI. It literally was the Mark IV that he just upgraded into the Mark VI. And uh, so that's what he had when he um, first was encountering Loki, and then when Loki threw him out of the window of Stark Towers, you know, that's when the Mark VII pod flew out the window and came on him, and that's when he came up and uh, says, there's someone else that you made angry. It's a guy named Phil, and that's when he shot Loki with his Mark VII suit. So that was when we first seen the Mark VII was in Avengers. Uh, da, 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 the Wasp, oh, man. I got my wasp and my 
I know about Wasp and Ant Man are coming. I just haven't been told that they're coming yet. The only ones I've been told that are coming are um, the only one I know for fact that is coming right now is the uh, white suit Tony Stark. And I've got my Mark IV holographic and my Venom. This Venom pool is in a big box. There's a lot of, a lot of them here. Ugh. He's a big, heavy box. So we'll get that open in a couple of weeks. That came from Sideshow. Boss looks great. We're very happy to get that. So interesting, looking at that actress who played the Wasp, and then realizing that she's also played in, in Lost. And it's like, it's hard to even look at her and recognize that it's the same person playing those two different characters. She looks great. Mandalorian, nice. Jon Snow. Dressing suit could be Mark 49, but nanotech, like the 50, so we can change and form to her. But when it was his, could have looked like the 50. Now, I don't know. I disagree with that. I disagree with that, Savon. I disagree. Just pre-ordered Mark 85. Battle damage. Nice. Really excited. Going to be a great figure. Oh, hell yeah. So I've got the regular 85 on the way, you know, whenever that comes out, and the battle damaged 85. And, and truthfully... I, I really want two 85s because I want him battle damage where he's like fighting Thanos or whatever. But I also really want him in that iconic end of life pose. I think that uh, sums it all up. And I don't know if, if I feel that morbid about it that I want to put him in that knelt down, you know, uh, where he snaps, I'm Iron Man. I don't know if I really want to do that or not. Um, but uh, it, it is what comes to my mind when I think of that suit the most. You know, him fighting Thanos is obvious, but that moment where he's like, I am Iron Man, you know, that really, uh, really sums the entire 22 movies up at that point, you know, especially with all the, uh, the Tony Stark storyline, you know, it's, um, from the first movie where at the end of it, you know, I am Iron Man. So, um, it really is, uh, important, I think, to, to pose him as such with his, gauntlet on saying, you know, I am Iron Man. I am inevitable, says Thanos. And there's no stones in his his gauntlet. And then Iron Man says, I am Iron Man. Sheesh. Uh, I don't know if they use three batteries or not. If they use three batteries, it'll be the same brightness as the other LEDs, right? There's regular white LEDs. But you have to keep in mind that the batteries don't last long no matter on any of those. I mean, we're talking a couple of hours max from the moment you turn it on to the moment that the battery is dead. You're not going to get four hours out of it. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's going to get less and less bright all the way down to the point where it's not even illuminated anymore. The only way you're going to get brighter would be if you were to hot wire, you know, AC, run AC into four and a half volts into that of uh, whatever amperage it is. I don't know. I don't know the amps are, but um, it'd be four and a half volts to power that. That would be the only way that you would get a nice bright light as far as that goes. Mark 85 is the last one. That's the one where he actually fought Thanos with and they made the gauntlet for it. So the Mark 50 was Infinity Wars. Um, he fought Thanos there, but they didn't have the red they didn't have the red gauntlet. So he came back from Titan and five years passed. And in that five years, he went from the Mark 50 to the Mark 85. And that's also when we've seen Rescue have her suit then as well. So, you know, in five years time, more or less, from, or seven years time, actually in five years time, he went from Mark 1, I don't know, in three years time, he went from Mark 1 to Mark 42. So he did 42 suits in three years' time, plus the War Machine suits during that same time frame. So um, Hammer took the Iron Man Mark II suit and converted it into the War Machine Mark I, but Tony built the War Machine Mark II, the Iron Patriot, the, the second War Machine Mark II, and the Mark 
Well, the Iron Patriot. So the War Machine Mark II and the Iron Patriot and 42 suits in three years' time. So 44 suits he built in Iron Man 3 in three years' time. So now we have, in five years' time, he only went from a 50 to an 85. And he has nanotechnology now. So he doesn't have to necessarily manufacture every single piece of the suit, the titanium and the vibranium and everything that's involved in the manufacture of these suits now. Because it's just all nano. Da, 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 da. You design it up on the computer, brrr, out it comes, it does whatever it needs to be done. In five years' time, he built 35 suits. In three years' time, he built 44 suits. See where I'm thinking something's missing here? So he's insane, and he wants to cover the world and everyone that he loves. And he just came back from Titan, where he was there you know, dying more or less with even more so concern over protecting Pepper and his child. And he only built 35 suits and two for, or three for a war machine. You see a problem there? Someone who's so obsessed as he is, always fiddling, always the mechanic, always working, always doing, always wanting to put an entire Iron Man suit around the entire planet and he only built 37 suits, 38 suits, in five years' time? I don't believe it. I don't believe it for one second. I think he built 35 suits for himself, and they're nano suits, which means all he had to do is just design them on the computer. Nothing had to be fabricated, just reprogrammed the creation of it on his body. 49 suits for Pepper, three or four suits or whatever it was for Rhodey, and I guarantee you, um, I forget his daughter's name, Morgana, I guarantee you she had suits too. Guarantee you. Guarantee you. That's what he did during that five years time to get to the 85. He built 35 and 49. So that's 85 suits. Plus Brody's three or four suits. And that makes a little more sense over a five-year period of time where he built all those 42 suits in three years. And had to build the suits, literally build the metal pieces, and it all had to fit on her. It wasn't just a growing nanotechnology that just formed on him. It actually had to be assembled. And he built Spider-Man suits on top of that during that time frame. So, no, I have a hard time believing. He only built 35 suits in five years' time. I don't believe it for one second. I do not believe it for one second. Uh, Storm Shadow still looks good. G.I. Joe figures, right? Any Jeff General Hawk. Rick Grimes' brown jacket. That never would have happened if Superman was with him. Superman versus Thanos. Well, more or less, he had that with Captain Marvel. Didn't she, didn't he like head, head butter? Because, in my opinion, Captain Marvel really is as strong, or maybe even stronger, than Superman. That's really where your real... That's your two characters... That would face off. Superman is faced off against Spider-Man in Marvel DC Comics. Superman is faced off against the Incredible Hulk in um, Marvel vs. DC Comics. But truthfully, in all actuality, Captain Marvel and Superman would be your real strength forces there if you wanted to have a, a good duke out. Um, and so we really did see uh, Superman versus Thanos, in my opinion, with Captain Marvel. Like when... Uh, was it Thanos like head butted or whatever and she didn't even budge and that's when he took off the purple I don't forget what the stone was took off the purple one and then just literally punched her senseless with it wasn't that the one that like the uh, what was that one the uh, I forget what stone it was but that was the power stone that, that's the one he punched her with removed it from the uh, the gauntlet and then punched her with it Darkseed Thanos, kind of the same. Darkseed, wasn't Darkseed DC? I think he sewed down on his suits because his daughter was born and he was spending more time with her. Uh, and she just got a little under older. He worked on the suits with her, kind of showing her. It's a nice way of looking at it. There is no doubt about it that she was his world. No doubt about it at all. 
you know, I, I don't believe for one second that he neglected his daughter. I don't, you know, obviously he, he uh, was always just a little self-absorbed with his dealings with any other woman. And uh, even with Pepper, he was always a little self-absorbed and or even concentrating more on his work or his suits than he was anything else. But yeah, I, I stand in agreement with you that he really would probably spend a lot of time with uh, his daughter. I don't believe for one second that he would have been a bad dad, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? So that's a possibility. That is a possibility. He did say when she was, when Morgana was, was it Morgana? Is that her name? When she was wearing the Pepper helmet, he said, what are you doing with that? He says something to the fact of, your mom never makes, your mom, your mom never wears anything I make for her. So now we're back to made for her. So he did say something to that effect, implying that the helmet that Morgana was wearing, which appears to be the same helmet we've seen later with the Mark 49, um, Peter, or Peter Parker, Tony literally said, your mom never wears anything I make for her. So, and I don't believe that either because she was well too versed in controlling that suit. Because remember when Bruce had to control the Hulkbuster 2, he had to go through a learning curve. And Bruce Banner is a freaking genius. 100% genius, you know? And uh, he had to go through a learning curve of trying to control the suit. Even um, Tony had to learn how to control the suit in the Mark II, as well did did um, Don Cheadle. Uh, not Don Cheadle. Uh, Rhodes had to learn how to control the suit because when he fought Tony, Rhodes was wearing the Mark II, Tony's wearing the Mark IV, and Tony just very fluently kicked Rhodes' ass and Rhodes just didn't have necessarily the full capability of controlling the suit in every aspect of things. As such, there was still a learning curve that had to be uh, created in order for him to totally 100% fight Tony. And, and I don't think, I think Tony lost, A, because he was drunk, but B, because he really kind of wanted Tony uh, Rhodes to take the suit, which Scarlett uh, Johansson's character, uh, Natasha Romanoff, told um, Nick Fury. So he's like, you let your brother, your other brother steal your suit? And he looks over at Natasha. He's like, I didn't even know that was possible. And she says, now the security lockouts are such that it's not. So he let Rhodes take the suit. But no, Pepper and him are working in tandem as a team. And anybody that's ever done any type of combat training or anything like that knows in order to work as a team as such, that is practice, practice, practice. That just isn't something that comes to you naturally. You don't you don't necessarily just ha have your back. You know, you don't work together as a team as they worked together. So she spent some time in that suit. So even though he says, your mom never wears anything that I made for her, she was very well familiar with that suit. It wasn't like Bruce Banner tripping on his own two feet as he's trying to control the, uh, the, the Hulkbuster 2 suit for that regards. Uh, he did. At the end of uh, Far From Home, Peter Parker made his own Spider-Man suit. Um, so uh, in the movies, we get that using Stark's technology. So uh, I remember it's funny because um, when Happy is with him, he's in the plane and uh, he says, uh, you know, you build a suit, I'll get the music. And he puts on some ACDC, which is one of um, Tony's uh, bands that he played in, in uh, his his uh, movie scenes. And Peter looks over and he goes, oh, I love Led Zeppelin. <laughs> but no, Tony, Peter was building his own suit at that point. So the, the suit that Peter built literally was the homemade suit. He never made a red and blue, more or less Spider-Man classic suit. All those suits came from... Mr. Stark. So his first suit would be the advanced suit that we see him make uh, and then we see at the end of the movie. Yeah, I think that they're going to do a Toby and, and um, uh, Garfield multiverse movie. I, I really think it's coming. I really think uh, the fans are going to be dealt that if they can get Toby and, and Garfield on board to do that. 
And I can't imagine why they would turn that down. And I can't imagine why they wouldn't throw lots of money at him for it. Because uh, it would really just cross everything in together. And um, I think it's something the fans would really enjoy. It would be nice to see all of them together doing something or anything. You know, tie it into one giant storyline. That would be great. I agree. Interesting. I, uh, that would be interesting if they had an updated Spidey suits. That would be really interesting. I did like the original Toby Spider suit because I thought it looked a lot like the classic suit. But the uh, third one, the other one, with, like the, the webbing on the outside of it, I didn't much care for that. But so I like them. I hope that they would redo all of them. Huh. That's interesting, Savon. I, I like your w way of thinking in regards to why the suit count was so low. I like that. That's good thinking. Yeah. Um, yeah, in regards to the jokes, I'm trying to think, did they ever really do anything? I guess the only jokes that he made really was uh, you know, he really wasn't joking. He was just saying innocent stuff that we, we perceived as a, as a joke. But no, he 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 didn't have a clever catchphrase or or stupid little things they would say to people as he was clobbering them. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, that is interesting. He didn't have that, right? Definitely a nanotech. Of course, it had nanotech. Oh yeah, all the suits from forty eight on forty eight. 48. Which one am I thinking of? 46. All the suits from 46 on were nanotech. Right? 46? Which one was the one in the helicopter where he put his finger into it when he was, when he was flying away from uh, the jail that was in the ocean? Was that 46? Or was that 45? 44 was Hulkbuster. But from that moment on, whatever that suit that was, that they're all nanotech at that point. Please pose the info of the Spider Verse post credit scene with 2009 O'Hara and MCU Peter Spidey. I don't have the MCU Peter Peter Spidey. I don't have any of those. Uh... Oh, you mean like the regular? Um, Spidey. Um, or you just like give him the finger? Who are you? You. Hey, you. Stop pointing at me. That one? Well, you definitely have the, the pose for that. You have the finger. You can definitely do that with it. But I, I'm not going to pose him like such. But you do have that. So you definitely can do that. Who are you? Who are you? Pointing at him. No doubt about it. It is funny that, that's, that they gave us this. Literally because they were expecting you to be able to do that. And they showed us a, a, a classic suit Spider-Man, didn't they? At the uh, Comic-Con. The Sideshow Comic-Con that they had where they were showing some of the figures. Wasn't there a classic suit Spider-Man that they had there? If I remember correctly. I need ID. Right. Uh, they did the same thing in um, Tobey Maguire, didn't they? After he got paid from uh, the wrestling match, which is where he got the check as well in the comics. 46. So that was the finger one, right? But I'm Spider-Man. No, um, it was the 46. Because uh, we see him 
at the end of uh, Civil War when he goes to see the guys that are locked up in the prison that's under the ocean. I forget what they called that. And he gets in his helicopter to fly off. And as the helicopter's flying off, he it's his left hand, actually. He hits a little button, and he, and he I'm pretty sure he just puts just his one finger on there and up the suit goes, crawls up his arm, and, and literally uh, goes on him in that manner from his finger. And then the, the chair rolls back, and out he flies out of the back of the helicopter as the helicopter takes off. So that would be the first nanotech. So from that moment on, all of them would have to be. Which now stops me at the Hulkbuster 2. I don't know if the Hulkbuster 2 is nanotech, though. Does anyone have the Kitbash suit Tony War from Civil War? The Kitbash suit that Tony wore from Civil War. Which one are you talking about? Like his like his suit, like the blue was it a blue pinstripe that he that he wore in uh Civil War? Is that the one you're talking about? The outfit where his arm busted. I don't remember that scene. You know, they never made that little hand that he fought um Bucky with. The watch, and I've got a one-to-one -one re re replica of the watch. Um, I've worn it many times. Um, it's pretty neat. The uh, the original watch they used as a prop to turn into that little hand that he's able to fight Bucky in when he's not in his obviously in his suit. Um, but now that I don't know what that was. To the vault. The jacket talks to Sam? I did not even remember that. I don't even know what you're talking about. That's outside of my house. I guess I'll have to watch that movie again. I don't even remember that. I do not even remember that. I do not. That's that's outside of my memory. Isn't that funny? I have to check that out again. So I think this has pretty much been a short, quick, down and dirty, done deal. In case there's anything else you want to talk about. Hulkbuster 2. I'm not sure if that was a nanotech or not. Plus, there's a suit that we see in um, Spider-Man Homecoming when they're emptying out Stark Tower. We see them moving the uh, suits onto the plane and Happy asks about the Hulkbuster. And it's not the Hulkbuster 2, and it's not the original Hulkbuster. There's another suit there that's off in the distance. And we see the Mark 42 also, which is quite interesting that that suit survived. So we, there's another suit, actually, we don't get any answer on from Spider-Man Homecoming. So I'm curious what that is. And he makes a reference to the Hulkbuster. Sorry, Robert. eBay, eBay, if you find something you like, there you go. I don't even know what suit you're even talking about. I'm sorry, I don't. I'm going to have to check it out. I don't know. I don't remember what the suit looked like. And yeah, I've seen lots of suits. Lots of suits. I can get the, you can get the tuxedo. You can get the suit from Iron Man. Uh, he's got lots of suits. I've bought a suit for my um, Obadiah Stane. The head sculpt came with the Iron Monger. And then I bought a suit for him. I don't remember whether or not it's actually the suit that he wore in the movie. But yeah, there's lots of suits out there. I just don't know which suit you're talking about, Robert. See, that is some Obadiah. The 
bad guy. The, uh, the stores that I see selling the suits are 1-6 Kit, 1-6 Outfitters, Giant Toys, um, Toys Wonderland, and uh, Alter Ego. So check those also and uh, see if there's suits there. Um, a lot of times you don't... I haven't seen that many suits being sold uh, by Big Bad Toy Store. I've definitely not seen any suits ever being sold by Sideshow. And I guess it's because you know they're all third-party products and they don't want to get involved in that, they're trying to keep their nose clean in regards to you know having to do with licensing issues. Should anybody ever scream that they're selling an unlicensed product or something to that effect? But that's my recommendation on finding these suits. That's where I look for my stuff that's outside of what uh, you know the main fabrication is, for that matter. Uh, what is this body? I think this is a Loki body. Or it could be one of my DID bodies when I was building my Johann Schmidt. I bought a bunch of uh, World War II soldiers to uh, make a Johann Schmidt, a Red Skull Johann Schmidt. And it may have been one of those bodies. I don't remember what body this is. It's not a Stark body, I don't think. But, but I did buy a busted up Loki and I bought uh, several of those German soldiers to be able to kit bash Johan. It might be one of those. If I saw Civil War you out, I've heard of Civil War civilian clothes that Cap and Tony wore in the movie. You're talking about in the beginning of the movie? When they come up with when they come across crossbones? A civilian suit? They had pretty much all of those at one point. You could have got in all of them. You could have got Cap, Cap civilian clothes and and Scarlet Witch's civilian clothes and and uh, um, Black Widow's civilian clothes. You you could buy them all. They made them all available. I think they even made a Vision civilian outfit with a sweater or something. I, I might my mind might be off on the Vision one, but I know for a fact they did uh, the others. So, and like I said, the the stores that were selling those at the time. One six kit, one six outfitters. Those guys were selling all of those, but I don't remember the Tony suit. Had a black leather jacket with the black eye, and his arm was busted. I do not remember that. You talking when he flew back to uh, Hawkeye's house? Is that when he was doing that? No, because he couldn't have, because he was chopping wood. Then. I didn't think Rescue's Pepper Suit may be the Mark 48, which is nanotech. Well, it says 49 on it. It says 0049 on it. And that's why everyone wants to say that it's the Mark 49. I think Steve had a brown leather jacket and jeans and a, and, and a ball cap in Civil War. He had a ball cap. But no, I don't remember. Yeah, I'm sorry, Robert. I don't remember what Tony wore. I, don't, I do not remember that at all. Sorry, man. I do not remember. I'll have to look at it again. I don't remember that at all. I have no idea why, but that is gone from my from my memory. It's crazy, absolutely crazy. So I don't know what else. I think we're done for the day. Cut you guys loose early, and uh, see you next week for uh, the Mark IV holograph. And thanks for stopping in this morning. Really good seeing you and spending time with you guys. Love every one of you. Appreciate you. Like, subscribe, share, thumbs up the videos. It all helps out. Uh, join my Patreon. I'm thinking about putting up all my videos over there commercial free for you guys that don't like being interrupted by the commercials. And, of course, because obviously you're paying for them. And, uh, you know, send a dollar a month my way. That'd be great. So thank you very much. Check out that figure. If you haven't got one, I recommend them. If you're if you're the casual Spider-Man collector, I understand why you might want to pass on him because he's not Spider-Man, but he is Spider-Man. He's another Spider-Man, like Miles uh, Morales 
and uh, Gwen Stacy. He's Miguel O'Hara. So thanks, man. Thank you very much, Jake. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, CBS Sci-Fi and all y'all for stopping in. It's good seeing y'all. Captain Neary. Thank you, Toys Mafia. Y'all take care. Have a good one. Peace out. I love you.